students. We're back in the studio today to talk about bowls. Um, I have a couple bowls here for you to look at. Basically, you don't have as much leeway with the form uh, of the bowl, lots of crazy forms, because you need your bowls to be more functional. And this is actually a straightforward bowl here, sort of classic shape, open, wide, very generous bowl, could be used for soup, could be used for chili, more of a dinner uh, type of bowl for a big bowl of stew, something like that. You'll notice the trimmed foot on the bottom and there's the swirl sort of detail on the interior, but the size is really comfortable. Smaller bowls like this that would be used for dessert, uh, like an ice cream dish or something. Um, these are really great nuts, fruit, bowl, that type of thing. You can notice that the rim of this bowl is flared out, making it a vehicle for decoration, which is really exciting. And you can do something like that for a bowl. Or I just have a small bowl here, and I just wanted to show you this one because the rim of this one was squared off on the wheel, creating a lot of visual interest, really different. Even with a big bowl like this, if you had squared it off, you could use the side of it as like a little spout to drink your broth out of if you had a soup bowl. And when we're talking about bowl forms, you know, you have some variation, you have some wiggle room. You could do a classic shape, um, a very architectural, very straight shape. You could have a mixing bowl that has a big rim a bowl that has a, um, a flared out rim, maybe one that's kind of peanut shape. You can even draw a drill holes in your bowls and make colanders for pasta and apply handles to the other side. So you have some variation with bowls. You have a little wiggle room, but mostly we're looking for bowls that are very generous, wide, open, have a nice height, and that are thin. Okay, students, let's get started throwing this ball of clay. Now, this ball of clay here is about the size of a grapefruit. It's two pounds. It's going to make an excellent large bowl. Um, to snap this clay down, I just snap it down right in the middle of the wheel. Seal my clay to the wheel head, and I make sure that my wheel is spinning all, it's going counterclockwise. You wanna make sure that you have your metal rib because you're gonna curve the inside using your rib. You wanna have your water bucket and all your tools available to you for throwing. So to center this ball of clay, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna squeeze, pull the clay up into the cone shape, force my hands to hold still. I'm gonna lower my ball of clay bring it down and as I get low I tuck the heel of my hand in and really press in with that left that right hand grab one more time from the bottom pull my clay up into the cone shape and back down again you should be using between two pounds of clay to a pound and a half. So the size of a large grapefruit to the size of a small grapefruit. I don't want you to make your bowls too much smaller than that because then they'll be more like little ashtrays than bowls. Now that I've got my ball of clay centered, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the ball of clay with my thumbs. I'm gonna stop the wheel and measure the bottom to make sure that I have a half an inch thickness at the bottom. Once I measure the bottom, I'm gonna hook my hands inside, my right hand, my thumb is out, and I want to spread the floor but when I spread the floor for a bowl, I kind of curve my fingers up a little bit because I need the interior of the bowl 
to be curved on the inside. So your bowl interiors need a nice, soft, gentle curve rather than a really straight-sided cylinder like what we did for the cups. To create that, I kind of curve my fingers up as I open. Okay, now I've opened my ball of clay. Just gonna compress the outside a little bit. Make sure it's really centered. And now I'm gonna pull up my wall. Once again, left hand goes on the left hand side, left thumb over, and I'm gonna create my little pinchy claw to pull the clay up. I'm gonna use my sponge in my right hand to impart moisture as I go up and also help me muscle the clay up. So I'm gonna grab and squeeze and I'm pushing in very firmly with this hand. The clay wants to flare out because of the centrifugal force of the wheel. You have to battle that by pushing in so that your clay doesn't flare out and flop over. Bring the clay up. And one more time, big squeeze from the bottom, pushing in really firmly with that sponge hand. Now, I already have a nice bowl shape here, but it's a little flat right through this profile. So I'm gonna round it out from the interior to make it a little bit wider and a little bit more generous. To widen your bowls, you do not press at the rim. No, no, no. In order to widen your bowls, the only place you need to press is right where the floor curves up into the wall. So the best place when you're opening up a ball of clay, pulling it up and then making your bowl shape is to work right here to expand and shape your bowl. To do that, I'm going to put a little water on the inside and I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna lean my hand in and then lean my hand, put my hand in and lean my hand out while I'm pressing right here where the floor curves up into the wall. So I'm pressing in and then you can see that the shape of the bowl starts to really change and it starts to widen and the curve starts to happen at the bottom. As you get wider, slow your wheel down. I'm also gonna take my pottery rib here, the smooth one. I'm gonna put it inside my piece, curve side down. I'm gonna hold it firmly, really close to the edge with my fingertips. And I'm gonna lay it inside my bowl, not stabbing down, I'm laying it in like a squeegee at an angle to compress the interior and round out the curve. So let's look at that close up. I take my metal rib, I hold it firmly, leaving a little piece exposed here and I lay it inside my bowl like a squeegee. I don't stab in. I lay it in right at four o'clock on the right hand side of my wheel. This sort of creates a natural rim. I can lay my tool up against that and round it out further. Or if I wanted to create a rim, I can take my metal rib right at the edge of the lip and flare that open to create something a little bit more formal. I'm gonna take my sponge, soften that up, compress the interior, and compress the lip. I have a nice wide bowl here. I'm gonna take my wooden stick, trim the bottom, Stop my wheel. I 
add my puddle of water and use my wire tool to cut underneath my form and get it sliding around on the wheel head. Don't force it to move unless it's ready to go. I'm gonna take my wooden board right here. Yep. Set it next to the clay. Slide my bowl onto my hand. You'll see it bend a little bit. And then I'll lay it down on the board. And when I take my hand away, it'll snap back into shape. Okay, throwing a bowl.